Welcome to ATC CAD. My name is David Atkins. Editing simple Lisp routines, a few lines or so, can easily be done using Notepad or whatever other text editor came with your operating system. But once you get over a few dozen lines, it can be hard to keep track over what parentheses goes where, what the API call is supposed to be, and honestly, that white background bothers me too. Today we will talk about three programming text editors that I like to use, and how to set them up. This is a huge topic, and there are more programming text editors out there than there are ants in my yard. I will definitely miss at least 400 in my list. So to all you Emacs and Vim users out there, why are you watching my video? You already know that you just need to clone the GitHub repo, implement the language server protocol, clone the autocomplete repo, and press Control shift alt f Please don't actually do this. I'm too dumb to use Emacs, and I don't know what that actually does. When looking up how to set up Vim, because I was curious, I came across my favorite paragraph in any tutorial ever. Adrian Acona says, Getting Lisp to work on Vim has been a struggle with me for a few years. Let's do some other editors instead. Visual Lisp is the old code editor that used to be the default code editor for AutoCAD. It's been deprecated and you kind of have to do weird stuff to get it to open up. I wouldn't bother. It does have color coding and full autocomplete, but it's really out to date and just so ugly. Do something else unless you have a severe 80s fetish, in which case I recommend you go watch old episodes of Night Court instead. Notepad++ is the first editing environment that I ever used. It features nice features like tabbed interface, a dark mode, and it has the Lisp programming language preloaded. This isn't the Auto Lisp language, which is a subset of the original Lisp language, so AutoCAD specific commands aren't in the autocomplete. But it does have parentheses matching, color coding, you can collapse functions, and the basic Lisp autocomplete is very nice to have. If you're opening up an existing Lisp file, it automatically recognizes the format and uses the right language. If you're making a new file from scratch, all you need to do is select the language you want to use, Lisp, from the drop-down list of languages, and you're ready to go. It's easy to stall, ready to go out of the box, and is quick. If you're not coding all the time, you'll be super happy with this vastly improved version of Notepad. It's missing a few more modern features like auto-formatting, a mini-map, and the interface is a little dated if you care about that. It's also for Windows only. But if you're just starting out, don't know any other programming languages, and just want to get color coding and parentheses matching, and want an open and free program in which to work, Notepad++ is still high on my list. You can find it at the link in the description. I was introduced to Sublime Text somewhere around 2010. It's a much better looking editor and has some significant upgrades. The minimap on the right hand side makes moving around in longer programs much easier. Setting up side-by-side -side editing mode makes stealing code from other programs simple. Selecting a full program and using the Edit, Line, Reindent option can make your code easier to read, though it's not perfect. Like Notepad++, it comes loaded with Lisp, but unlike Notepad++, I was able to find and install an AutoLisp add-on that really helps when making more complex programs. Installing the AutoLisp add-on can be done with the command palette. On Windows, press Control shift p For Mac, press Command-Shift-P. In the command palette, type Install Package Control and press Enter. Then you can type AutoLisp in the command palette, click on the option that pops up, and you're good to go. Now you can go to the View menu, choose Syntax, and change your format to AutoLisp. Very nice. Sublime Text has a super clean environment, works for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and does have some nice features. You can download it for free from the link below, but to register it, it does cost $100. The preview period is unlimited, but if you find yourself using it regularly, buying a license is a good thing. I struggle to talk to any programmer that hasn't at least tried VS Code. The development software created by Microsoft is an extremely powerful development environment and is now the default editor that comes along with AutoCAD. In the Manage tab in the ribbon, you'll find the command Visual Lisp Editor. The first time you click it, it'll ask what editor you want, and VS Code is the recommended option. As a quick note, if you click on this command and the old Visual Lisp Editor opens up, you can change this by typing the command Lisp Sys and changing the value from 0 to 1 or 2. 
the difference between 1 and 2 being the character sets it saves to. Ultimately, if you're programming in English, setting this to 2 is fine. If you name your variables in different character set, like Hindi or Cyrillic, you'll want to choose option 1. Changing this will ask you to restart AutoCAD, and then you'll be fine. If you open VS Code from within AutoCAD, VS Code will ask you to set the syntax to AutoLisp, and you're pretty much set. If you've already installed VS Code and want to install the AutoLisp extension manually, click on Extensions and search for the AutoCAD AutoLisp extension and click Install. If you click on the gear icon in the lower right and choose Extension Settings, you can change the settings for how you prefer your formatting to look if you're particular about that sort of thing. Selecting the entire file with Control A, you can right click in the file and choose Format Document to apply these settings to your program. Having a consistent formatting style makes working with someone else's code much easier. To check the language formatter that VS Code is using, you can click on the language status marker in the lower right and make sure it's set to AutoLisp. This is a much more complicated program than the others, but its tight integration with AutoCAD can make development a lot simpler. The debugger will load your program into AutoCAD and any errors will pop up in VS Code. Here I'm trying it on a much older Lisp file. I already have AutoCAD opened on another screen in a blank new drawing. So I just need to do the following. Clicking on the Run and Debug tab will display the Run and Debug command. This immediately lets me know that I probably have a bad path because I haven't had Architectural Desktop 2004 in almost two decades. So I can click the Disconnect option in the toolbar and fix my problem. When I highlight the first line, you'll notice that it highlights all the other occurrences of that text. I can right click and choose Change All Occurrences, and I can edit all the lines at once. Nice. Running it in debug mode again, and it runs without issue. Hooray! Choosing the code editor that works best for you is like choosing a car. There's no right option for everyone, and the best thing to do is test drive a couple and see what fits you best. Going forward in this series, I will be using VS Code because it's the current AutoCAD default, but that doesn't mean you need to. In the next episode in this series, we'll discuss how to automatically load your Lisp routines when you open up AutoCAD. There are several different methods with different advantages and disadvantages, so we will cover them so you can decide which is best for you. I never really expected my first AutoLisp video to be one of my most popular, and I'd like to thank everyone who has subscribed, liked, and commented on that. The next episode will definitely come out much sooner, so if you haven't subscribed yet, do it. There won't be another two-month wait, I promise. What's your favorite text editor for programming? I know I left out at least 4,000 of them, so let me know in the comments just how disappointed you are. Finally, if you're interested in our AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Fusion 360, MicroStation, Civil 3D, SketchUp, or 3DS Max classes, check us out at AtkinsTechConsulting.com. As always, I'm David, and happy catting.